The periodic timer allows us to run tasks on a timer in a way that is efficient and asynchronous. Instead of using a threading timer, a UI timer, or a dispatcher timer, and depending on callbacks, we can use this one timer to safely execute our code. Let's see how they work in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on a technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So here I have some example code and I put it in a console application. Typically we see these periodic timers used most in web applications or even desktop applications where you want to run, have something running in the background. But I want to put in a console application so you can see exactly what's going on without having to have all the extra stuff around it. So this is all there is to a periodic timer. The first thing is you need to declare a periodic timer. Now I've used the using statement here so that when this application closes, it will properly dispose of this timer. Now, when you declare and instantiate it, you have to give it a time span. In this case, I've set a time span of 1000 milliseconds or one second, and you can give it whatever time span you want from one to all the way up to, uh, except for the max value, one below the max value for a time span. Now you can give an infinite time span. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what's going to happen is this timer is going to tick or run across that one second threshold every second. And we can change this to five and that'd be every five seconds, it would fire this timer. Now what I've done here is I create a while loop and I said, while await timer dot wait for next tick async. What that means is it's going to wait for that timer to, to complete. And it's going to then do something in this code. In this case, we're just writing out to the console and we're incrementing I by one, and it will continue to loop that way forever, except for the fact that I put this and I is less than five. So we'll only execute it five times before we exit the while loop. Now that does not stop the timer from running. What it does is we've stopped listening for it. So the timer will run again. It's just that we're not listening for it. So nothing happens. And when we're done, it's going to say we're done. And then we can, you know, hit the enter key and we'll close out of our application. And at that point, we'll dispose of the timer. So let's just see us running first to see an action. And then we're going to kind of see some of the different parts of this. So here we have our timer running. And as you can see, it's every tick or every second, it's running that event. Execute number one ran at 5.14.35. And this last here is the thousandths of a second. And notice they're really close, but they're not exactly the same. This is to be clear. This is a timer that runs every, every period as you ask, but it's not going to be exactly precise because it does depend on the code that runs inside these curly braces, where if this code runs for longer than a tick, let's just put a, a, a delay in here. We're going to say task dot, let's await task dot delay. We're gonna say a delay of, uh, let's do 3000 for 3000 milliseconds, which gives you three seconds. Now, what do you think will happen here? Because we're delaying inside this, this call. Well, first we ran it right out after one second, but then we have a one second or three second gap and a three second gap and a three second gap and another three second gap is going to come up. So it still ran five times, but we have this gap in between. So what happened because this timer is supposed to run every second. Well, that's true, but we're awaiting for it and then doing some code and then away again. So in the meantime, even though the timer has hit multiple or could have hit multiple times, it just hits and has, it waits. So it's waiting for us to come back around and say, okay, now the next tick and it's already waiting for us. Therefore it just says, yes, I, I have been hit. So that's something to note is that if you're expecting this to be from 
you know, every second from the start of one to the start of the next, that's not necessarily true. It's going to be from the start of one plus however long it takes your code to run to then the next one. So that's just something to think through. Now, this all works with .NET 6 and above. Okay, so .NET 6 and above. But we are going to look at something that is only in .NET 8. This is a new feature in .NET 8, and that is the idea that you can change the period. So let's get rid of this await. And we're going to say timer.period, and we can set whatever time span we want. So in this case, we could do two. Let's do this. Let's do um, i times 1,000. So we're already have incremented i, so we don't have to write zero, but one times 1,000 is one second, two times 2,000 is two seconds, and so on. So you can see how we can change the period as we run this. So the first one, we have one second, then two seconds, the next one will be three seconds, the next one will be four seconds, and so on. So we can change how long these take to run by changing the period as we're going. We can change that period and, and see the new time execute. So this can be a way to make your timer kind of variable depending on the circumstances. Maybe you are checking for, for new results every 15 minutes, but then when you don't get new results, you expect some, maybe you shorten that next call down to every five minutes until you get results, then you go back to 15 minutes or whatever you wanna do for your different timer periods. You can, as I mentioned, also set your timer dot period to be equal to timeout dot infinite time span. And what this would do is essentially turn your timer off. It's saying, hey, you know what? Don't ever fire again. And that might be something you want to do if you are you know, running something somewhere else and you, you want to wait to re-execute the timer until after you've you've done some tasks. Maybe you set a timer, timeout.infinite time span, and then do some work and then set it back to whatever value. You could do that if you want or have a pause feature for your timer or whatever. So that's also possible. Just note that if that were the case, then it's going to wait forever for your next tick and it won't happen. So you wouldn't want to leave this list this way unless you were going to change it somewhere else to go back to a time span. Okay, so that's the, the periodic timer. And by the way, this is, again, th these changes right here are .NET 8 changes. Okay, the timer dot period, you will change that after the fact. That's a .NET 8 thing. All right. Also, you can only have one thing look at this, wait for next eight, a tick async. So you can't have multiple of them per instance waiting for that next tick async. You would do all of your calls for different things inside the query braces if you're doing it in a while loop. You don't have to do it in a while loop. You could just say if timer dot wait for next tick async dot is completed or is complete. Um, you could check that and see if it's true. So there's different ways of checking for it, but typically this will be used for things like a web application where maybe you want to have the, the cache refreshed every minute or two, um, but you don't want to have to trigger it based off a user's action. So therefore you run this in the background and have it refresh that cache every minute or whatever. And that way your cache is always refreshed, but um, you don't have to you know wait for a specific user event to to update that cache. So things like that you could do. Um, you could do other background tasks in a web application, like you know, sending out an email when new orders come in or whatever that case may be. The same with desktop applications, you can do background tasks. There are more comprehensive systems for background tasks like Hangfire and Quartz and others, but this is for simple things. It's a really great timer to use across all different types of applications. Okay, so that's it. It runs asynchronously, which means that we can do other things while we're waiting for this and so on. Great little tool to use. I wouldn't use it necessarily in a console application, but um, you can use it in any .NET application you want from .NET 6 and above. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.